Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our Sunnah followers Tawheed class. And for the Tawheed class, we are studying Islamic character and Islamic morality. And Islamic character and Islamic morality are what each and every one of us as Muslims are supposed to have within ourselves. But unfortunately, most of us do not have the character of a true believer, and we definitely don't honor the morals of Islam. We can look and see how we live, each, how different Muslims live their lives, and see that they're not really following the character and morality that Allah has set in place for us. And uh, yesterday we did our introduction to this series. We spoke about how uh, the five pillars of Islam, how they in and of themselves help to teach us Islamic morality and Islamic character. And so what I'm gonna do is start the class off by first giving us a quiz. Everyone a quiz here to see how well you understood uh, yesterday's uh inf information and by the way there will be a class uh for each uh and every uh a day so make sure you guys take notes get out of here okay make sure that you guys take notes for each class so you can ask questions and also make sure you review uh the powerpoint and i will post uh the powerpoint link for each uh session on facebook so you can go to my recording on Facebook and you will see uh, the link to the website and also I'll have the link to the PowerPoint for each day. And uh, also, please share me and this my classes, my lectures to your Facebook groups and your Facebook pages, because there's a lot of Muslims out there seeking true knowledge and understanding of the Dean, and perhaps you can be the one that Allah uses to guide them to that. Okay, with that said, let's look at the questions on the screen. And this is an authentic hadith that we discussed yesterday. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have been sent with the purpose of perfecting which of the following? Is it A, Islam? Is it B, morality? Is it C, religions? Or D, belief in Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent with the purpose of perfecting which of those uh, answers given there. What do you guys think on Facebook? Sister Sanaya, Brother Melvin, Sister Sarah, Precious. The prophet said, I was sent with the purpose of perfecting which of those following answers. Is it Islam? Is it morality? Is it religions or belief in Allah? People on Zoom, what do you think? Morality. Say it again. People on Zoom. Morality. Good job. The, good job. The correct answer is B, morality. Good job. Okay, and that is an authentic hadith from from uh, Muwatta. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have been sent with the purpose of perfecting morality. Okay, that's what he came to perfect. And by teaching us good morals, in turn, he taught us Islam. Because that's what total submission to Allah is all about. Islam is an Arabic word. For those of you who are new to Islam, just so you know what the Arabic word Islam means. Islam does not mean peace. Islam does not mean peace. 
Islam means total submission to Allah. Everybody understand that? Total submission to Allah. So when we say that our religion is Islam, we are saying our religion is to consist of total submission to Allah and nothing or no one else. It does not mean peace, like some of these uneducated, famous people tell you, okay? Okay, so the prophet said by teaching us good morals, in turn, he taught us Islam. And that's what Islam is all about, good, having good morality, good morals. Okay, let's look at question number two. Question number two. How? So now who can explain to us how praying five times a day helps to build good morality? Okay, since the prophet was sent to teach us good morals, how does making salat five times a day, how does praying five times a day develop good morality? Who can answer that? Anyone? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum it keeps your mind out of doing stuff that's not going to please Allah. It keeps your mind on pleasing him, doing things that's going to make him happy instead of doing all this other mess that's not. Okay, that's a good answer. By, by taking, by setting aside worship or remembrance of a law five times throughout the day, this keeps us mindful. This keeps us, us mindful of him. Good answer, Sister Amina Fresno. Who can give us another answer? There's so many uh, answers. Who else can tell us how does praying five times a day build good morality? Okay, through remembering him, uh, by taking the time out of our schedule to remember him five times during the day. This helps us be mindful of him. What else? How else? Anyone else? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I was going to say another thing that you um, develop while praying the five prayers is like you learn the importance of cleanliness and being presentable when you're standing in front of someone of importance. Um, Good job. Also, the importance of cleanliness. Wait a minute. Before those of authority is learned. That's good morality. That's good, very good, uh, um, Malion. That's good morality. You learn that how important it is to be clean when you stand before those of authority. Okay, good job, uh, Malion. Anyone else? Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, also by praying and remembering and building toward building good morality, it teaches us, um, had the word, I just lost it. Hold on. Talk on it. Hold on. Yeah. What morality does praying five times a day help us to develop? The morality of cleanliness, the morality of remembrance of Allah. What else? I can't think of the word I had, Layla. Complete brain freeze. Okay, anyone else while she tries to remember? Anyone else? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. It also teaches us humility, humility and to be humble. Good job. And also, this teaches humility and humbleness. Good job, Sister and Supreme. I got one. And, and go ahead. Um, it teaches us to be in a repentant state. Okay, that's morality. Also teaches one oh, I'm trying to make it be morality. Uh, also okay. teaches one to be aware of his or her shortcomings. Well, again, we want the answer to relate to more morality, good morals. 
We should know what our shortcomings are. Repenting is an action of something else. But okay. yeah, it'll teach us to be aware of our shortcomings. That's good morality, good morals. I was gonna I was gonna say discipline. It teaches us how to discipline ourselves. Okay, good job. Also teaches discipline because you have to have discipline to be able to stop what you're doing to yes. remember a law. It takes discipline to stop what you're doing to remember a law. Good job. Discipline is a good is a is one one of the uh, good morals we all need. Discipline, cleanliness, humbleness, humility, awareness of our shortcomings, remembrance of a law. Anyone else? And uh, it teaches us how to be kind to those who are less fortunate than us. Okay, what does kindness have to do with making salat? Again, guys, don't come made. with no, don't come with no stuff that ain't got nothing to do. This is how does praying five times a day build good morals. If you guys don't know the meaning of morality, look it up in the dictionary. Good morals. What does praying have to do with being kind to anybody? Prayer is between you and Allah, not between you and some people. Okay. Some, anyone else? Anyone else? There's so much you can come up with. From prayer. Well, let me look on Facebook too. Hold on, let me go along Facebook. Oh, good job, sister. Okay, now we got some good answers on Facebook. Let me look at them. Uh, helps us from sinning. Exactly. It keeps us from sinning. Good job, sister Sauter. How obvious is that? Whoever said kindness, why come you couldn't just say for you? It's about you. It ain't about nobody else. It keeps you from sinning also keeps you from sinning because you're remind you're mindful of a law good job sister Sauter. let's see what else okay you gave the same answer sister sarah as sister Sauter. good job also sarah said it learns patience also teaches patience do you see what morality is sister awa morality refers to character of that relate, but that you learn from praying. Prayer teaches patience. Good job, Sarah. Also consistency. Good job, Sarah. Look at these Facebook on it. Also praying five times a day teaches consistency. Good job. What else? Let's see. Well, Sarah came with a bunch. Also, oh, good job, Sarah. Sarah just got him going. Also teaches submission. To a law. Exactly. Girl, Sarah's on the ball. Sincerity. Good job, Sister Mariam. Mariam said prayer. Praying five times a day also teaches, also builds your sincerity towards a law. Because you're being sincere. Your sincerity towards a law. Because prayer is for a law. You're building sincerity towards him. Good job, Mariam. Let's see. So, okay, good job. Anybody else? These are a lot of good answers uh, that came from off of Facebook. So praying five times a day helps to build good morals. What morals do you build, Sister Awa, from praying? You build the moral of cleanliness, humility, humbleness, awareness, of your shortcomings, discipline, remembrance of a law. It keeps you from sinning, teaches patience, teaches consistency, teaches submission, and builds your sincerity towards a law. Good job. Good answers here, guys. Very proud of y'all with these answers. Okay, let's go to question number three. We also spoke about how the prophet taught us that fasting, fasting is another pillar of Islam. It's another pillar of Islam. And by doing it, it too builds certain morals or certain morality. What type of morals are built from fasting? Who can answer that? This should be an easy one. 
What type of morals are developed or built from fasting? Anyone? Go, say it again. Self-control. Mashallah, number one. Number one, self-control. You learn self-control from fasting. That's the good job, Pfizer. What else? Come on, guys. Also, it strengthens your righteousness. What does that mean? Uh, you become more righteous. You become what more does righteous mean? You better. You, there's a um, righteous. There's a lot of words yeah. that fall. Self-control okay. is righteousness. You got to be more specific. Uh, Come on, guys. How does well, it make you righteous? You get it teaches you discipline. Too. Hold up, hold up, Anissa. Let go to Mike. Let go oh. to Mike. Thank oh. you, Lisa. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, uh, the T. For what type of righteousness? Righteousness it's, is another a synonym, Anissa, for morality. What yeah. type of righteousness does fasting uh, build? It most definitely teach you discipline. Okay, good job. Also, self discipline. You see now, the T. Uh, uh, um, Anissa, righteousness is another name for morality. What type of righteousness, Anissa? Anissa, what type of righteousness? Self-control, self-discipline. Anybody else? Um, mindful of your own actions. Good job. Mindfulness of one's actions. Good job. That's the morality. What else? It teaches you patience too. Good job. Patience. Takes patience to fast. What else? What other mor morals? What other morals do we learn from that? Good job. You because you respect yourself. The fact that you can control your emotions, control your uh, desires. That's respect. It helps to develop respect for yourself. Good job. You guys got it. Come on, some more. Let me look at Facebook too. Oh, um, good job. Mariam maybe? said makes you more empathetic. Good job, Mariam. It teaches you how to empathize for others. Good job. Also, Mariam said it teaches you gratefulness. Gratefulness. You're more grateful of the things Allah has given you. Good job, Mariam. Look at the answers you're coming up with, girlfriend. Layla, uh, Layla your answer is like um, Anissa's. What do you mean, become a better person? To become a better person is a synonym of morality, and it, which is a synonym of righteousness. You have to do break it down, be specific. You and uh, Anissa got the same issue. Okay, what else? Anybody else? Go ahead. Fasting builds self-control. Fasting builds self-discipline. Fa fasting builds mindfulness of one's actions. Fasting builds patience, self-respect, empathy, gratefulness. Anything else? Come on, guys. It's so much. Humility. <clears throat> yeah, compassion. humility. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, good job. Yeah, humility and compassion. It also builds compassion. You become more compassionate of others. Sympathetic. We Did we get sympathy too? You become more sympathetic of others, more empathetic. Sympathetic and empathetic are two different words or two different meanings, but you learn both of them from fasting. Good job. Anyone else? More giving. Exactly. You learn how to become more giving. It teaches you how to give more. Exactly. You guys are on this. So as you guys can see from these answers, just from praying and from fasting, see how the prophet taught this. And most of you who have been students of mine for 20 some years, you know all the hadiths that, uh, that emphasize self-control, the importance of self-discipline, the importance of patience, self-respect, compassion, the importance of submitting yourself totally to a law, being consistent, being patient, abstaining from sin, you know, remembering the law on a regular basis, being aware of your strengths and weaknesses. And by the way, these are all attributes of Allah's names. You guys see that? All these things you guys came up with are all attributes of Allah's names. So this is how we take the names of Allah and incorporate them as attributes of ourselves. 
Allah is the one who has self-control. Allah is the one who disciplines. Allah is the one who is sober, patient. Allah is the one who has humility. You guys see that? So this is how we incorporate these names. The prophet taught us to fast. He told us the reason why we fast, to become better righteous people. How do you become a better righteous person? Well, you're going to learn self-control. You're going to learn self-discipline. You're going to learn how to control your desires, your emotions. You're going to learn patience. You're going to learn to be more grateful for the things the law has given you. You're going to have humility towards others. You're going to be more giving. Do you guys see? Do you guys see how? By learning the names of Allah, I mean, the friends know you are also learning how to become a better Muslim. I mean, the friends know. Do you see that? Amina. Amina, you see how the names are working? Yeah. Exactly. That's why I was teaching you guys those names and how to incorporate them as attributes for ourselves. Okay, good job on that. Let's look at the next question. Now, we also talked about how the prophet taught us about zakat. Zakat is another one of the pillars of faith. And by learning and implementing the pillars of faith, then we in turn develop good morals, good character, good behavior. Well, how does paying zakat build good morality? How does it, Sister Anissa, how does uh, paying zakat help us to develop good moral morals. In fact, what morals does paying zakat bring about, Sister Anissa? You want to start us off again since you had some good answers before? Go ahead, Anissa. Start us off again. Well, uh, hmm. I, want, I don't know what I want to say about that. Charity. Say, Remember, yeah, zakat is giving is charity. Is a, is a, is a, is a is a means of uh, uh, compensating for sins that we do. Okay, listen, charity by helping yeah, charity. others. What impact does helping others have on you? How does it make you a better person? I'm blank. Oh, poor Anissa. Okay, that's okay. I mean, and, and you believe it or not, guys. Um, Anissa is one of the most charitable people you could ever meet, but right now she just can't think. Go ahead, anybody else. Okay, could I say that it helps you to be more, um, oh, I, I did, I had it on the tip of my tongue and lost it. It helps you have more compassion for others. Exactly, it also uh, helps establish compassion. And who's more compassionate than Anissa? Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. How else does uh, paying zakat, uh, how, give me another example as to how paying zakat builds good morality. Anyone? <laughs> it makes you more considerate. Oh, mashallah. It also makes you more considerate. Good job. And who else is more considerate than Anissa? God, Anissa is always considerate of others. Go ahead. Go ahead. Gen you become more generous. And generous. Exactly. Generous with your time. Generous with your uh, your your presence. Go ahead. It makes you selfless. Very good. Selfless. What else? Good job. Oh, let me look on Facebook. I'm, I'm sorry. I, they people on Facebook say I keep forgetting them. I'm sorry. Let me look. Here I go. Good. Uh, well, yes, uh, Laylee, it makes you more understanding. Helping others always makes you become more understanding of other situations and problems. Okay, what else? Good job. It teaches you moderateness. Good job. Oh, Mariam, you are on the ball today. Mariam said it teaches you moderation. Good job, Sister uh, Mariam. Also, anything, anybody else? Go ahead, guys. Who's on that microphone using the bathroom? That, who else? Sabrine? No, I'm looking right at you. Oh, God. Fresno! <laughs> Sabrine, you got an answer for us? 
I'm gonna look at the screen now. You gotta unmute us if I just muted her. Oh. It teaches you self-pride. Oh my goodness, great, exactly. Also guys, Pang Zakat teaches you self-pride, helping others. You know, we're supposed to have that self-pride, guys. You know, you it should make you feel good to help others. It should make you want to help others. Go ahead, Sabrina. I know you got some answers for this. For, uh, what's the question again? Morality. How does a helping, giving, giving and charity help build good morals? What good morals does a helping others build? It builds compassion, consideration, generousness. Uh, selflessness, understanding, moderation, self-pride. What else? Uh, it helps you to build empathy. Good job. It also brings about empathy, empathy towards others. Okay, anyone else? It makes you more open-minded about people's situation. See how she thinks outside the picture. You can tell she's one of my <laughs> students. Yeah, she's my student and grew up here. Exactly. Uh, 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 open-minded, exactly, uh, helping others, giving in charity, helping those who are less fortunate than us keeps you more open-minded to other people and their situations. So see, look at the good morals here, you know, by teaching us to help others. The prophet taught us to be open-minded. He taught us to have empathy and self-pride, to be moderate, to be understanding, to be generous, considerate, and compassionate. Mashallah, do you guys see how this works? And also these two our names of Allah. Allah is the most compassionate. Allah is the most empathetic. Allah is the most prideful. Subhana Allah. You guys see, learning Allah's names, taking the meaning of those names, incorporating them in myself. I'm going to help more people in life. Do you guys see how Meliun was able to do so well with that name thing? Because she took those names and applied them. She thought outside the big picture and uh, I mean, thought outside the little box to the big picture was able to incorporate them within herself like this. SubhanAllah. Good job. Okay. Let's look at the next question, which is the last one. What about Hodge? How does performing Hodge teach you good morality? or good morals. What good morals do you learn from making Hodge? Anyone? What good good morals do you learn from making Hodge? How to control Patient. your behavior. Say what? Patient. How to control your behavior. That's good. Patience, good job. Both of y'all are right. Patience and self-restraint. Good job, uh, Fresno. Good job, whoever that was. Patience and self-restraint. You learn that because you can't curse. You can't indulge in any bad behavior when making Hodge. Otherwise, your whole Hodge is annulled. What else? Good job. And you have to be considerate, too. When you're there. Exactly. It helps to build consideration. Good job. What other moral morals? I was going to say equality because everyone is equality there. because you learn, you learn equality because you can't tell who's rich or who's poor. Mm -hmm. When we make Hajj, we all look the same. We all dress the same. We all go through the same struggle. So you can't, you could be making Hajj next to a rich man and not even know it. Okay, Subhana Allah. So it, it teaches us equality that we're we're all basically we come from the same source, which is the dirt. You know, no man is more superior over another ex unless he or she is righteous. That's it. But the looks, you know, and all that doesn't mean nothing. The money doesn't mean anything. Good job, good answer, Malion. Anyone else? Let me look on Facebook too again. Oh, good job. Mariam said Hodge teaches resilience. Exactly. I'm telling you guys, Hodge, the prophet, I mean, the uh, Aisha, the wife of the prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said the greatest jihad for any woman is Hodge. You have to be resilient. Hodge teaches resilience. It teaches that. Good job, Mariam. 
and unity, which is uh, equality. Good job, Laylee. Anyone else? Health to develop love for others. Wait a minute, hold on. Yeah, and unity. Good job. Also, it does. It teaches love for others. You get to see that here, you know, we're supposed to have allegiance to the believers, no matter what part of the earth they come from, no matter what their race is, what their language is, how they look. It when you make Hajj, you you develop this love, this connection with these Muslims sharing the tent with you. You develop this connection with these Muslims who are going through the same struggle that you're going through. So it teaches us to love one another, you know, free of all that other cultural garbage. Good job. So mashallah, you guys did very good. So if you look at these, just the five pillars, you can see how, what the prophet meant when he said, let me put it up here so y'all can see. When the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I was sent with the purpose of perfecting morality. What did he mean? I was sent with the purpose of perfecting cleanliness, humility, humbleness, awareness of your shortcomings, discipline. I was sent to perfect remembrance of a law for you, to keep you from sinning, to teach you patience, consistency, and what true submission is. I was sent to perfect sin sincerity towards a law to perfect self-control, to perfect self-discipline, to perfect mindfulness of your actions, to perfect self-respect, to perfect sympathy and giving, to perfect open-mindedness, to perfect moderation, to perfect understanding, to perfect self-restraint, to perfect unity, to perfect resilience and love for others. Do you guys see that is Islam? What are the diet teaches you this way? Huh? Are you gonna learn this from these other famous speakers? They'll tell you how to make babies, how to have babies, how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with the stress of life. But can they tell you how to better your relationship with Allah? By learning how to better your relationship with Allah, by understanding your purpose in life, by knowing what you were created to do, by knowing what it means, what the prophet came here to perfect for you, you will learn how to deal with stress. You, it, it teaches you how to deal with anxiety. It teaches you how to raise your children. It teaches you all the manners that you need to pre present to others and all of that. It's all about learning Islam, guys. And you're not gonna hear this from many people. No one I know teaches like me. And that's a fact. It ain't no brag or boast. Well, there are people that teach like me. I'm talking about right here in Oze Tazuni. None of these other female diet and very few of the men teach like me here in Oze Tazuni. Everybody got that? Okay, any questions about any of these answers? So that's when next time you hear that hadith and somebody tells you, what did the prophet mean when he said he came to teach you uh, the, uh, to perfect uh, um, uh, morality? You can answer like this. Well, he perfected all these things for us. And by teaching us all these things, he taught us Islam. He taught us the five pillars. This is teaching you the pillars, teaching you the articles of faith and all of that. Okay, any questions here about any of these answers before we go to today's lecture? Any questions before we go to today's lecture? Uh, not a question, just kind of, out of a state. Well, I guess question, statement, whatever. But it seems like with all of those things, discipline seemed to fit in all of those categories. For, you know, like discipline was the main, I won't say the only but main one of the people. main ones. And yeah, remember, yeah. I told you guys when you learned the names of Allah that there's a hidden message. You will see the same names con contain, I mean, different names may contain the same meanings. Though, if Allah is emphasizing the same meanings, He's trying to tell you something. The same with this, the meanings y'all came up with here, the mor morals y'all came up with here is a message to us. We need to work on discipline because it takes discipline to obey a law. 
and it takes discipline to disobey him. And we're going to talk about that. There's different types of patience. Okay. It takes patience to obey a law and it also takes patience to disobey. Him. And we'll talk about that in this series. So discipline is so important. It takes discipline to fulfill your obligations to a law. It takes discipline to not fall into sin. It takes discipline to pull yourself up off up, up out of depression. It takes discipline to keep yourself from falling into it. It takes discipline to control your children. It takes discipline to know when to hold and when to fold with your husband. It takes discipline to go to work every day and come home and do the same routine. Discipline is so important for us. That's one of the number one characteristics of the true believer. And we're gonna talk about that in this series. Good point, Sister Latifah. Anybody else with a comment before I start the lecture? Cause I gotta get the PowerPoint up on the screen. Anyone else with a comment or question? While I open up the, uh, I'm sorry, I should have had this PowerPoint open and I didn't, I'm getting ready to open it now. I just got back in here, let me, oh, here it is, morality. Okay, no questions, no other comments. Wait a minute, let me check Facebook again. Okay, good job. Okay, all right, well, let's go ahead into today's uh, a lecture on morality and character. Let me put the PowerPoint. And by the way, guys, uh, I gave you guys the link to the PowerPoint yesterday. This is going to be the second slide or the second set and I'll post it, the link again, for those of you who didn't get the link yesterday on the Facebook recording, and I'm not talking about the ones I'm gonna post on YouTube, the Facebook actual live recording, I'll go back and put that link on there for y'all so you can, it'll be on each, each uh, lecture. Okay, today what we're gonna focus in on is this. People who are weak in character and morality, these are people who are weak in their iman. You know, a lot of Muslims will come to us and complain, dear sister Layla, I feel so weak. My iman is so low. You know, why am I going through weakness of faith? I don't feel like I'm able to do my, I'm not doing my prayers right. You know, what is wrong with me? Well, look at your character. If you are a person that lacks self-respect, I find that those women and men who lack self-respect, who lack self-esteem, who lack self-love, these are the ones that fall short in performing their prayers. They're the ones that fall short in wearing hijabs because they lack the morals needed to make you a strong believer. And this is what we're gonna uh, focus on today, okay? We have to remember that faith, faith refers to your belief in a law. And belief in a law is such a powerful thing that it can keep us away from bad character. It will keep us away from bad behavior. Belief in a law, strong belief in a law encourages you to achieve good character and good behavior that's why you will come upon those sisters a lot of people may ask uh dear sister layla why is it that some of the sisters i know you know uh their their souls they have such self-confidence and such high self-esteem and they they pray and they do what they're supposed to do well that's why because they have the characteristics that the prophet tried to enforce and teach us. A person with high self-esteem is not gonna allow someone to bring them down. And that's a person that has a commitment, a tie, a connection to a law. That's a person that puts a law before their husband, before their children. A law is number one with them. And because of that, that's why they have such high esteem, self-esteem. And that's why, you know, they're so dynamic. Okay. Also, guys, we have to understand whenever a law calls us 
towards virtue. And whenever Allah wants us to hate evil, he declares it as an essential requirement of faith. For example, in Surah Tawbah, Allah commands us as Muslims, he says, adopt righteousness as your character and always speak the truth. He says, oh, you who have faith, if you really have faith and fear a law and be with the truthful people. So again, your faith, your belief in a law is imperfect without good character. If your character is lacking, if your morality is lacking, then your faith will be lacking too. A person with good character is not going to hang out with a bunch of hypocrites. A person of good character is only going to hang out with other Muslims who are practicing and living Islam like they are. Okay, so again, good character determines how strong your faith is. We also have a hadith, whereas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained that when your faith is strong and your belief is firm, then you will have the characteristics and the moralities that others will not have. But if the more morality and the characteristics are weak, then you will be the same. An example is of this is modesty. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we talked about this hadith in a class two days ago. The Prophet said modesty and faith are twins. The one who gives up one will lose the other two. Remember, we talked about that hadith where the prophet said faith consists of over 60 branches. Shyness is one. Modesty is one. A person that doesn't have modesty is a person that's lacking in their iman. A person that doesn't have shyness is a person that is lacking in their belief in the law. So again, all this shows how in order to have strong faith, you have to have good character and good morality, okay? And here's the hadith that we spoke about the other day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by a, a man from the Ansar who was um, admonishing his brother about uh, his shyness. So the prophet told him to let the man go because shyness is a branch of faith. Okay, so again, guys, good character, people with good character, people with good mannerisms, people with good morals, these are the strongest people in faith that you will meet. But people with bad character, people with bad manners, people with bad morals, they are the weakest people. Okay, another example. There was a, a, a man who harasses his neighbor and makes his neighbor suffer uh, from his harm. This is a person that you will look at as being cruel. And in Islam, this type of person is hated. Okay, and that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us as Muslims, he said, by Allah, a person can never be a believer. A person can never be a believer. A person can never be a believer. He said, if his neighbors live in fear of him. Again, how can you call yourself someone who believes in Allah? When your character is so bad that anyone that comes around you, anyone that lives amongst you lives in fear, you're not a believer. The believers are loved by others. The believers are people whom we can trust. The believers are people whom we gravitate to because they make us feel secure. They make us feel good. They, they make us feel at ease. But if you're someone that people fear, you are not a believer. You have a deficiency in your faith. You are deficient in your belief in Allah. And let's look at another example. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised his companions to stay away from talk that is trash. 
and to stay away from actions that are evil and wicked and stay away from deeds that are senseless. He said, a person who believes in the law and the hereafter should speak only good or else remain quiet. Supana Allah, so many Muslims today. We think we're so strong in our iman. We think that we're so down and with the dean, you know, but everything that comes out of our mouth is trash. We're always trash talking other people. We're belittling other people. We're gossiping. We're backbiting. We have nothing good to say. These are not believers. These are evil people. The true believer knows when to hold and when to fold. The true believer knows to shut up. He knows that if he can't say anything good about a person or something, he shuts up. And that's hard for us. A lot of us like to put our view in. We want to put our comment in. You know, you can post on your Facebook page, oh, I love Sister Amatula. She is so sweet. I spent the day with her and we went out together to and had lunch and then we went shopping. Oh, what a wonderful sister. And then somebody else will come and say, I hate her. I, you know, she's a bad person to me. Wait a minute. Why did you have to put that on that page? If you don't have something good to say, then shut up. Because there's always two sides to every story. You know, and who needs to hear that? If you have a personal problem with Amatula, then you deal with that with you and Amatula. But there's no need for you to blast her with, when somebody else has something good to say about her. This is a problem that many of us have today as Muslims, especially women. And that shows just how many of us Muslim women are deficient in our Iman. We are deficient in our belief in Allah. Okay, so uh, I want you guys to remember low morality and weakness of faith, they go hand in hand. A person whose character is bad is a person whose iman is weak. And it even shows itself when we make prayer. Remember, the prophet said he was sent to teach us how to perfect morality. And he taught us that through the prayer. We talked about on the quiz today, the, the, the good morals that we learn through prayer. We learn humility. We learn, you know, discipline. We learn consistency. Well, a person who has bad character and bad morals doesn't show this. They won't stand close by other Muslims with to pray. They don't stand ankle to ankle, shoulder to shoulder. They rush through their prayers. They do not perform the positions with humility. They are not patient to perform each prayer uh, completely. They wanna move and get it over with. Okay, so again, that's an example how if a person has low morals, low character, it's gonna show even when he performs his or her prayers. The people who take their time and perform each position correctly, the ones who take their time to recite correctly, these are people of stronger iman, of stronger character, okay? Also, the people who are weak in their, in their morality, these are the ones that's always questioning why Allah doesn't answer their supplications too. They have no patience when performing the prayer. They have no patience in waiting for answers from a law either. You know, again, morality and faith go hand in hand. Listen to what Imam Ahmed said. He said, a person once asked the prophet, he said, oh, prophet of Allah, there's a woman who lives amongst us She's very well known, you know, for the prayers that she makes. She's always fasting. She's always donating her money to different charities, but she's always gossiping. She's always talks about everybody in town. She knows everybody's business. What will Allah say about a woman like that? The prophet said such a woman would go to hell. 
You know why? Because all her good deeds were destroyed. All her good deeds are destroyed because of her mouth. She won't shut up saying bad things about people. And this is what we talked about in the Hadith class yesterday. Uh, Sister Amina Fresno asked a question, what is meant? What did the prophet mean when he said the last deed that you do in this world can determine whether you end up in hell? You know, that's an example. I can spend today donating all my money in charity, you know, helping my neighbors, being kind to my children and grandkids. And then I can go to work and get mad and punch somebody out and then slip and fall, hit my head, bam. All them good deeds I did were null and void because of that last action I did. Well, the person that gossips, the person that backbites, the person that's always running their mouth, always saying bad things, that's a person that just eats up all his good deeds. They're just destroyed. They're just destroyed. So that's what that hadith is speaking about. That's a great example of it. And then on the other hand, uh, the, the, another person said, oh, prophet of Allah, there's another woman that we know. She doesn't do much in regards to fasting and prayer because, you know, she performs her obligations, but she doesn't do that many voluntary deeds. And she doesn't have money to give in charity, but she'll give you some pieces of cheese. But we feel safe around her. She doesn't gossip. She doesn't backbite. What will be her fate? The prophet said, if that's true, then she will be one of the women of paradise. So that's an example of the opposite side of that idea. There is a person that could that, that cannot have any deeds that can take them to paradise, but the one last deed they do can determine that they end up there. You know, so again, guys, character, character and morality determine your strength of faith. How is it that this sister right here can be married to a man and that man makes the mistake of punching her one time and she'll turn around and say, this is it, I want kula. And she will get a kula and walk away. But another sister married to a man similar, he punched her one time and, oh, I forgive you, punch me again, okay? Because one has strong character. That first woman, she has so much self-respect, so much self-esteem, she loves herself, she has so much confidence that she ain't gonna tolerate nobody taking her down. But the other sister's weak. She may have been stripped of her confidence due to life or stripped of her self-esteem. And oftentimes a lot of men like to do that to us guys. They like to strip us of our strength to make us vulnerable to them so they can abuse you. And that's why I always tell you guys, no one can abuse you unless you give them that power to do that over you, okay? And we shouldn't do that. Work on your Iman, strengthen your Iman by strengthening your, your character. Know what your strengths are as a human being and know what your weaknesses are. Try to rid yourself of those weaknesses and then your faith will develop more too. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Okay. So um, um, again, guys, there's another hadith and I want to share this one with you. And this is the one that you guys hear me mention a lot. I always tell you guys, you don't want to stand before Allah on the day of judgment bankrupt. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in my nation, the poor is that person who will stand before Allah on the day of judgment. This is a person that did a lot of prayers. This is a person that gave in charity. This is a person that used to fast but he's someone who abused somebody else or he's someone who falsely accused someone else or he is someone who who stole something from someone else or he's someone who murdered someone else or hit someone else all his good deeds all the fast that he get he gave all the extra prayers he gave they will all be given to his victims you know, and that person, if that person has no uh, deeds left, 
then he will be thrown into the hell. And there's the hadith that you guys hear me quote all the time. And I tell you guys, everything that I teach you, everything I teach you is based on what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. You don't want to be a person bankrupt on the day of judgment, having to give up all your good deeds to the people you hurt, okay? Because your character was bad, because you were a rotten person. You had no self-control. You had no self-restraint. So you hurt people with your tongue, or you hurt people physically, or you took their property. Again, it's important. That's what we talked about, discipline. Do you see the word here, Latifa? This is why in those five pillars, you see discipline, discipline, discipline being mentioned. We have to learn to discipline, have discipline within ourselves to reframe the last name of a law that we study, to reframe, to hold back our tongue, hold back our anger, hold back our desires, because if we don't, we can be the poor person standing before a law bankrupt on a day of judgment. So I hope you guys see here how good character, good morality determines how strong your iman is. If you have bad character, bad morals, your faith is weak. But if your morals, your manners, your character is good, these are people who are unshakable, unshakable in their iman, okay? Also guys, uh, uh, if we look at the examples that we see from the hypocrites, you can see how a person who suffers with hypocrisy, and for those of you who don't know what a hypocrite is, a hypocrite is a person that says they believe in a law, but in reality, they don't. You can look at how they live their life. You know, they, you, we don't go around calling people hypocrites ever. Okay, but you can look at how a person lives. Oh, I'm Muslim, but you smoking marijuana, you're fornicating, you're adulterating. You will sit there and tell me, I ain't got to pray. I ain't got to pray. And I repeat, I don't have to pray. Prayer ain't no obligation. If you look at the hypocrites, you can see the correlation between faith and morality. You know, and that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if a person has three characteristics, all three of them, even if he fasts, even if he prays, even if he makes hajj, even if he calls himself a Muslim, he's still a hypocrite. And those characteristics, characteristics are that whenever he or she speaks, they lie. Whenever they make a promise, they break it. Whenever they are given something to guard, they betray it. And these are the people that love to play the dirty dozen with you. Don't make them mad. Tick them off and they'll tell you your mama, your daddy, they'll talk about your kids, your grandkids, your, your great, great grandmama and all of that. So it don't matter how many prayers that person make, how much fasting that person does, how much charity that person gave, if he has all three of those, that's a hypocrite. People can't trust you. You break your promises to us and you play the dirty dozen when you don't tick you off because you will go there you will go to that dark place, okay? So thus, guys, we see from all these hadiths what Allah means when he says that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to perfect morality for us because by perfecting morality, he was also teaching us the names of Allah and how to incorporate them as attributes for ourselves. He was teaching us good manners, good behavior, good character. And in turn, these things all strengthened our iman or our belief in Allah. So this is what we're going to be focusing on for the next uh, a few weeks, character building and morality character building and morality character building and morality because without good character without good morals you are going to be weak 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 in your practice you will be one of those women that don't wear hijab 
You're one of those men that don't grow a beard. You're one of those Muslims that don't pray. You're one of those Muslims, you know, who don't fast. You're one of those Muslims that don't practice, period, because you're lacking in morality. You're lacking in character. So I'm going to help you with that. You know, this is a, a hands-on class. You know, I'm going to help you to develop the characteristics you need to be strong so you can be resilient. That word that we use today for Hodge, a person, Hodge teaches resilience. And so many Muslims today are lacking resilience because life is meant to be a test for us. Life is meant to be a struggle for us. We're gonna go through ups and downs. Life is not a, a merry-go-round. Life is a roller coaster. We get through one trial, Allah is gonna send us another. When then we get through that, he'll send us another. So it's a roller coaster, up and down. You need to have the right type of character to survive. Only the strong survive. You want to be like Amina Fresno, strong, resilient, can handle death and bounce back. You want to be like Sister Anissa, strong, resilient, can handle life's problems and complications and bounce back. And you want to be like Layla Nasheba, strong, resilient, can handle the hatred of the people of this world and the trials of life and be alone and independent trust in her lord and get through every obstacle okay so make sure you guys uh share uh uh this on your facebook pages and i'm gonna put the um powerpoint slide uh on this uh facebook lecture so you guys can study it tonight because there will be a quiz There'll be a quiz to cover what I taught today. And also I'm gonna focus on those hadiths because you know we all about the sooner here, keeping it real with the understanding of those companions. So make sure you guys uh, 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 review this lecture tonight when I post it up on YouTube. And also make sure you review the slide, the PowerPoint so you can do well on the quiz. On that note, I'm gonna stop right here. Supana kalahuma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Are there any questions?